Hello everyone, this is uh, Coyote7890 and uh, just wanted to show you and go over a couple things that people might find interesting uh, as KTM has progressed through their bikes. Uh, I just bought this in 2019. I bought a brand new out of the crate 2016 uh, 1290 Super Adventure T model and uh, I picked this over the 2019 model for quite a few reasons that I preferred but uh, the next person might prefer the 2019 model for the differences. So, but I really like this bike. I put my first 500K in it. I bought it yesterday, rode it home, put 500K on the first tank of fuel. And then now it's in the garage as I put all my extra little goodies and stuff on that I got. The rest of the stuff's on back order. But uh, a few things that this bike has that uh, is a little bit different. It's got the usual iconic shape of a, of a super adventure, except for as you can notice, it's got a totally different uh, front headlight instead of the you know, conventional V that the other ones have with the black and orange. This has got H11 halogen bulbs, which I really like, so I can upgrade those for uh, very cheap. And of course, it's got your daytime running light. The ring there on the bottom is your daytime running light, which, uh, you know, I like that. I kind of like the old school look of it. And also, it comes with a different windshield too. Um, the one on the actual new bikes doesn't have this little aerodynamic fin in here. It's all just one straight flat windshield where this one has that extra little protector and I don't really know why besides a little bit of different air the way it moves over your helmet and stuff but the new bikes don't have it so I wonder what how much of a difference it actually makes or not uh, the next big thing when I was riding this bike yesterday home which man was I ever impressed by it what a great motorcycle to ride it had just a blast is of course the first thing you notice is that the bike has the old school um, digital tack instead of having the new analog tack like the new uh what do you want to call it um lcd screen that's what i'm thinking for i'm just going to go here so i want to see how far it would go on the first tank of fuel so i actually took it right down and you'll see where there's my first trip i put 506 kilometers on it and let's go to the other menus because this menu is a little bit different than the new bikes uh drive mode dampening Load, where it shows you specifically for one person, two person, luggage. Uh, of course, your motorcycle trash control, uh, your heating. This is one thing that this bike has that the new one doesn't have, is it does have three settings, which almost burn your hand on hot with my gloves on, when it's on super hot for the uh, both sides of your hand controls. But then you also have, which I love, is you've got the better upgraded seat, and then also your pillion seat on the back, your passenger seat, both are heated right from the factory with a better gel seat, which isn't great, but it's definitely an improvement over the 2019, which is very hard, where this seat is a little bit better, but I'm still going to go for the, the heated gel. And then, of course, back here, you've got your, where you actually turn for the passenger seat on between high, medium, and low for the back seat, which is really nice. Uh, some more things about the bike that are different. Uh, of course, oh, let's go back to where I was showing you. Um, of course, the usual stuff. I got to still set my favorites. The bikes are new. I haven't done that yet. I uh, got all your usual stuff that you would want, which is your air temperature and battery voltage, oil temperature, all that stuff. Um, it's actually pretty accurate. Like, it's 18 degrees outside, and what do you know? The oil is 18 degrees according to the sensor. <laughs> um, let's go back here. Trip one. There you go. So you can see where, yeah, I drove 500 kilometers and I was getting about 5.4 liters per 100 kilometers, which of course that's the idle it's showing right now, instead of being the actual fuel economy that it was getting. That's all been reset because I was playing with the features yesterday. And yeah, I really like it actually. I gotta say, I really like it where it's got your old school digital gauge so that when you're actually going up hills and stuff, uh, you just see the gauge in your eye and you're not having to with the LCD screen. I found it a little bit tricky getting used to having an analog gauge or a digital gauge instead of having a good old where you just look in your corner in your eye and you know where you're doing for RPM. Especially yesterday because I was actually off-roading the bike a little bit. I went up and down about uh, six miles worth of big, steep, dirty, washed out road up and down a, a really nice, beautiful part of uh, Dry, Island, Dry Island National Buffalo Jump Provincial Park here in Alberta, and that part was super. So yeah, um, the other thing about the bike that I noticed is different is that uh, number one, of course you have a key, which I really like having a key instead of having the fob, which with the new bikes, 
you actually had your start modes here. One to engage the bike and then the other one to start it. And that's how it started where now that's your cruise control on here. So you actually have your cruise on this side where on the 2019 model, the cruise is actually over here and you have a little bar that you can toggle. Whoops, sorry. I'll swap with my left hand where you toggle it on, up, set, resume from here, which is nice because when you're riding the 2016 bike, as soon as you go to have the throttle on and you go to hit it, you find that you're a little jerky with the throttle. So you always have to come over when you have one hand on, you got to bring your other hand over and then touch it to turn it on or off for set or mode or else it gets a little bit choppy when you're riding. But other than that, I really didn't notice a big difference. Um, let me see what else did I know is different about the bike. Well, of course, with the T model, you uh, actually get a, a 30 liter fuel tank and that's how the bike's able to go 500 and some kilometers, which it'll be more than 500 when the bike actually breaks in. I only have 500 kilometers on the bike, so the fuel economy I can only assume will get better and better as time goes on, even just a little bit. I mean, it's ha pretty happy where it's at now. Let me see, what else is different about the bike is, of course, in 2016, it automatically came with free saddlebags, which were really nice, because that's a $1,500 Canadian option, I believe, and those were free on the bike. Um, the 2019 doesn't come with two things here that I liked, is it didn't come with the protective crash bar, you had to buy the R rally mode to get a crash bar, exactly the same as this. And the street doesn't come with that. And you also get is your lean angle lights. So when you're going around cornering, and I was trying it last night, it works out really well where you have one light for 20 degrees, or 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees of lean. And when you lean the bike over, they flash up and they light the, light the corner that you're leaning into. And I found that super helpful. I was out testing it last night here downtown on the, the clover, uh, clover leaf. Uh, on ramps and off ramps of the major highway around here and it worked out really well another thing that you get when you buy the 2016 which I like is I really like the spoke wheels I think it's really cool how the bike has the super uh, adventure stickers which doesn't come on the new bikes but comes on this one and I like the spoke wheels I think they look really good and I mean in all reality bikes were spoke wheels for <laughs> 50 60 years before we ever came out with five spoke aluminum wheels like the new ones or the carbon fiber ones that the new bikes have so to me, I don't mind it whatsoever. And what else is about that? I think that's about it for the most part. I can tell that I just, I only did 500K and my chain is already loose. So I'm gonna have to give that a little bit of adjustment. It's gonna go in for its first service here for 1000K, so I'll let them do that. I'll ride it until it uh, gets to 1000K, which will be one more weekend, and then I'll have the 1000K on it. Take it in, let them do the oil change. They can do all the checks and stuff on it, and way to go. The cool thing is KTM gave me 500 bucks worth of free goodies, so I actually bought a whole bunch of the little small little orange pieces with KTM on, right? I've got the one here too for the clutch cover, except for I don't have an Allen key big enough for that, uh, which I was surprised by, so I'll have to go buy an Allen key so I can swap this out and put the orange uh, aluminum one in there. And I ordered it with, of course, the clutch reservoir orange. I'm still waiting on back order for the actual brake reservoir one. I've got the GPS mount to come up here from my Garmin, and that's on order. That was also free with my 500 bucks. And there's a whole bunch of other pieces that I'm getting, and I think there's about 15 pieces that I got for 500 bucks, and just waiting for those to come in and then know what all the different ones are. I just went to the catalog, and I'll take this, this, and that. And like I say, here's your rear brake cover. So it's now the nice orange KTM, nice finish on it. And of course, there's your other for your uh, suspension. So that closes and ties that off. And yeah, anyway, overall, the bike's been just super. I've really enjoyed it. And you know, I really like the 2019 model. It was a great bike. Um, I just found that the options on this bike, there was more of them. And I saved quite a bit of money actually buying a brand new out of the crate 2016 comparison to paying full price for a 2019. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I got some others here riding the bike. Some of the places that I'm gonna go to, I'll put on YouTube on my YouTube channel. And if you like, take a look at those as well. That was Coyote 7890. All right, thanks everyone. Have a good night.